I'm explorer Jill Heinerth. Come join me for another Into the Planet adventure video. Hi, I'm Jill Heinerth. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about side mount rebreathers. If you're considering one, then I'm going to talk about the differences between a side mount and a back mounted rebreather, the different risks associated with each configuration. I'll share with you some of the things that I think are really important to know if you choose to take up side mount CCR diving, specifically an in-depth talk about work of breathing, and finally I'll give you some of my conclusions. So let's have a look at the Liberty side mount rebreather. It weighs 48 pounds when it's ready to dive with the scrubber, the tanks, and everything else. If you um, take it apart and put it in a Pali Air case, the whole thing um, ships in the 23 kilogram limit that's perfect for air travel. Uh, out of the box, it's completely neutral, which is really nice. Now, why would you want to dive a side mount rebreather as opposed to a back mount rebreather? I mean, some people are really um, just interested in the fact that this is, you know, one simple unit that you're going to be able to just clip right on your body with two quick clips. So it's, it's kind of simple in that configuration. Um, you use a standard side mount rig. And so this is instead of one of the tanks, and then on the other side, you wear a bailout tank, and you come out pretty trimmed. If I uh, use this with a dry suit with uh, lightweight undergarments and a steel tank on my left side, I'll wear about a four pound weight on my right just to counterbalance the steel tank. Uh, if I'm... Um, just wearing an aluminum tank as my bailout tank. I don't need any lead at all. Um, and I, I might just be a hair light in a dry suit, but in a wetsuit, that's totally fine and well trimmed. A lot of people are really interested in side mount rebreathers because the, the trim is really nice. When you're horizontal, you're absolutely horizontally trimmed in the water and you're just literally hanging there. Um, as opposed to when you're in a back mounted rebreather, there is you know quite a shift as, as you move buoyancy wise from horizontal to head up and feet down. Um, so this is really um, appealing to a lot of people who want to go through small spaces, cave diving, um, and dive in complete horizontal trim. Um, like I mentioned, you've got two clips, one that's going to clip right on the sort of hip to the rear of your side mount rig, and the top one will clip somewhere on the chest harness. I actually take an extra bungee, uh, so the bungee that's on the side mount harness, and I pull it around uh, the valve on the top of the rig, and what that does is it really pulls the rig close to my body, and that's incredibly important in a side mount rebreather. Uh, so the whole thing is like held together on this stainless steel frame. I think they make a titanium one too. Um, and so it's a little bit taller than a tank. The mouthpiece itself comes up and into your mouth. And the cool thing about this rig, one thing I really like about it are these uh, injection levers here for diluent and for oxygen. Uh, it's to me, a really easy way to uh, to reach your manual injectors and it makes a lot of the diving skills really intuitive. You know exactly where the gas is coming from and where it's going to when they're sitting up there right by your mouth. Now if you're going to dive a side mount rebreather, any side mount rebreather, there's a couple of things that you should know. They're easier to flood. Now when this is in your mouth, you can see that there's a straight line of travel right down through the breathing loop, through the counter lungs, and down into the stack. What that means is that if your mouthpiece breaks, like if the tie wrap breaks, if it's dislodged, someone kicks it out of your mouth, 
then the water has a really easy, fast path all the way down to the canister. In a back-mounted rebreather with over-the-shoulder counter lungs, if the mouthpiece is kicked out of your mouth, then the water will travel down the exhalation hose, it'll hit a water trap, and then generally drain down into the front counter lung, and then you're able to get rid of the moisture. Now, you can still get rid of moisture in this rebreather here, so you do have a dump that allows you to get rid of a little bit of moisture, but if you've had a major flood, um, it's very possible to get water all the way down into the canister. And that's not just with this model, that's with any side mount rebreather. Another risk though to think about is how um, the work of breathing changes between a back mounted rebreather and a side mounted rebreather. So on a back mounted rebreather, the entire breathing loop is much better uh, and closer to the centroid of your lungs. So that's the very middle balancing point for inhalation and exhalation. It just simply can't be on a side mounted rebreather because even if you've got it right up under your armpits, you've got tanks and counter lung there that are pretty close to your lungs, but then you've got the canister all the way down at your hip. So depending on your position in the water, um, that work of breathing is going to shift dramatically from hydrostatic pressure. So head up is going to be completely different than head down. Horizontal is going to feel pretty good because the counter lung and the canister are at least in line with your body. But you're probably going to find overall in normal you know, uh, swimming positions with a little bit of head up that you're going to have a bit of a... Uh, tougher inhale at the bottom of the inhale. Uh, so that's characteristic of all side mount rebreathers. Now, work of breathing is not just hydrostatic effect, meaning your body's position and that relationship between your lung centroid and the center of the breathing loop on the rebreather. Uh, we also have uh, an effect caused by resistive effort within the breathing loop. Resistive uh, work of breathing is the gas passing through all the different twists and turns and corners and valves, and as it does so, um, that slows it down, speeds it up, creates turbulence. So there's a work of breathing associated with that resistive circuit. You know, it's much like if you um, yelled fire in a movie theater and everyone got up and, and tried to run out the door and started tripping over each other and, and uh, blocking the door, that would be a poor uh, resistive um, uh, work of breathing. But if you told everyone to get up calmly and walk towards the exit and please leave the theater and they did so in an orderly fashion, that would be a much better uh, resistive uh, effort in terms of work of breathing. So all rebreathers have the, the resistive work of breathing as well. And so, you know, in a rebreather like this, you have some, you know, additional resistive effort at this 90 degree turn, for example, and where the mushroom valves are. Uh, but, but the resistive effort is also important in, in creating a certain gas velocity that allows for the gas to stay in contact with the scrubber for a sufficient dwell time in order for the scrubber to have an opportunity to do its job. So there's a lot of engineering that goes into all of that. The bottom line though, with a side mount rebreather, is that so far there isn't one that can pass the CE 14143 specifications for work of breathing on a rebreather. It's physically impossible and that's really due to that whole length and the impossibility of getting that um, completely balanced around your lung centroid. So what does that mean for you? It means that your rebreather, no matter what side mount rebreather you have, is not past CE, meaning it's not past a specification that's been deemed appropriate for life support. So uh, that sounds a little scary. There are lots of rebreathers out there that are sold, at least in North America, without CE ratings at all, and these are back-mounted rebreathers too. 
Um, so when you're stepping into a side mount rebreather, you know that you're going to have an increased work of breathing no matter what. The deeper you take that, the more problematic that that can become in terms of carbon dioxide buildup, something that we don't yet have sensors for in side mount rebreathers. So that means that you're really a, a test pilot in a way, and you have to acknowledge that. Um, even in the 40 meter range, this isn't going to pass uh, the CE work of breathing, nor is any other side mount rebreather. So is that a risk that you want to take, that you're willing to take? Um, you know, do so uh, with the knowledge that, that, that that's what's going on here. It's physics and we can't beat physics. So um, I think that's important for people to know. And I think that's important to um, decide whether the you know, streamlining, the sort of ease of transport and everything else is, is worth it for you. If you do choose to use a side mount rebreather, um, I've been using this for almost a year now, the Liberty side mount, and I've had a really good experience with it. Honestly, you know, between you and me, I'm still a little leery about those deeper dives. Now, this is fully equipped for deep dives with two helium sensors, four oxygen sensors, an amazing, um, you know, interface between the, the computer handsets. Um, and so it's equipped, but, but I'm nervous because, you know, if I have a really high workload situation or a non-optimal, you know, swim and trim position, then that could create a work of breathing issue that creates a carbon dioxide buildup. And so it might not be the safest choice um, for me for those really deep dives. But as I was saying, um, I've had a really good experience with this in the last year and um, have really enjoyed the simplicity of just throwing it on like a tank. Or um, if I'm on a project where I dive some rebreather dives and some open circuit dives, I can easily switch from side mount to um, CCR um, just by putting on a tank instead of the unit. Um, so if you want to learn more about uh, the Liberty side mount, check out the uh, company Dive Soft. Uh, they're the distributors uh, uh, for the rebreather. They have a back mounted version as well. And full disclosure, they have loaned me this rebreather. And so I'm just giving you my um, my feelings and thoughts about it so far, um, but I didn't buy it. So <laughs> I think it's important to disclose that in the video too. So Thanks for joining me at Into the Planet Videos. Don't forget to click the links and subscribe. You'll be supporting our channel.